Do you ever have those moments in life where you feel like you are on candid camera, where it's just so odd and weird? You tell yourself, I've got to be on film. I had some of those experiences weeks into my, well, days into my federal prison sentence when apparently, because I was a newbie, and I looked out of sorts and a little confused, dazed and confused, people continually asked me things like, hey man, would you like me to do your job? I said, no, thank you. 15 minutes later, someone would say, hey dude, would you like me to do your job? And then about 30 minutes after that, another guy came up to me and said, hey man, would you like me to do your job? It was so odd and confusing that I literally felt like I was on candid camera. Someone had to be watching. Well, as it turned out, there are a lot of new dudes in jail who will allow people to do their job, pay them, and make a lot of mistakes. So as Jesse Smollett gets sentenced on Thursday, and I expect him to be sentenced to prison now, if he doesn't get sentenced to prison, you can leave comments and that says you were wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you're giving bad advice here. I'm of the opinion because he perjured himself on the stand and he lied in front of the judge. That's a big no-no. And he went to trial. The trial tax and the perjury is going to lead him to prison, probably Cook, Cook County Jail, for a little while. In this video, I'm going to cover some specific prison advice I would have for, well, I would give Jesse Smollett before he goes in. Full disclosure, I tried to film the same video last Friday at USC following my lecture at my alma mater, the, the business school, but the wind, it wasn't great. Windy, the noise, I just sucked. So I'm going to put a little video of it here to show you that I actually did it, but I've decided to redo it today from the home office Tuesday, two days before his sentencing. So let's dive right in with some prison advice that I would give him. And the theme to this video, the overarching theme to any prison advice I would give him is just say no. I'm going to say it again. Just say no. Let me give you some specifics. There are going to be sycophants in prison. Good, There are sycophants around him right now who allowed him to go to trial. Presumably the lawyers who wanted the big uh, Kashinsky, some of whom I presume will be writing a book when this is over about the experience and the injustice that came his way. But he has had a lot of sycophants around him giving him really bad advice like, hey man, let's go to trial. It would be foolish to think there are not going to be sycophants in prison. So my advice to him is, no more sycophants, Jesse. That's a big negative. Avoid them at all costs. Just say no when they come up to you looking to give you granola or Coca-Cola or peanut butter, a pair of shoes, a pair of sweatpants. Say no thank you. Just say no because when you begin to take things on the inside, what do our parents... Well, I had this lesson with my daughter last week. Didn't go great. We had the conversation about reciprocity, right? Someone invites you over, you should invite them back, even if you're not the best of friends. Well, in prison, you're in this very confined environment. So if you take something from someone, in time you're expected to, to give it back, or they may expect a favor from you. You gotta learn to live alone in prison and enjoy your own company. And the benefit to him, him being in prison, by the way, is he's already in prison right now. He's thinking about it day and night. I don't think he's getting a new trial. But in prison, at least, it's clearly defined. The clock is t ticking towards your, your end date. So first piece of advice, say no to the, the sycophants. Continuing, say no to the guards. Okay, so Jesse Smollett does not view himself as a criminal. Anyone that goes to trial doesn't view themselves as a criminal or guilty, or else they would have pled guilty. So he has convinced himself that he is not a criminal. Right? He's looking to get a new trial, convinced himself of it. For that reason, it would make sense that he probably would better associate with law-abiding citizens, even though a lot of these guards are on the take and they're crooked. We get calls from them at our company. I think a guard a week in America gets arrested. A guard a week. It's a big number. Continuing, it would be in his interest to remind himself, hey, I don't view myself as a criminal, but that doesn't mean I'm going to associate with, with staff and the guards. That doesn't mean I'm going to take favors from them, right? A lot of people who do not view themselves as, as criminals will associate with staff rather than the common criminals like me, the dude serving 18 months for a white collar crime. So it would be in his interest to say no to staff if they say, Mr. Smollett, come into my office. I have a, I have an iPhone. Feel free, feel free to call your, your agent or somebody. I know you got a raw deal. I'm a huge fan. I love your music. Love the show. Shows should be canceled without you. It's terrible what they did to you. Huge fan of I told you that. And by the way, I'm not allowed to ask you for this, but I'm going to put it out there. Are you ready? I'd love an autograph. Actually, I'd love three autographs. Make it five. My cousin loves you too. Okay, those things happen to celebrities in prison. 
right? They, they, it happens. We've had a lot of celebrity clients go to prison. He's not one of them. But if he were, I would tell him, hey, you don't need to speak with us on the phone. Watch this video, man. Say no to staff when they ask you if you need the extra phone minutes. If they ask you if uh, you want a little bit more commissary, say, no, thank you. I'm no different from anybody else. And if he can say no, he can then prioritize. My mic just went rogue here. If he says no to that, he then has more time of not having to pay back inmates for things they gave him, not having to spend time with staff as if they're friends. He can then begin to adjust in a way that is commensurate with you know how people in prison should adjust, which is, I'm going to grow my network. I'm going to prove worthy of the the love and support that I'm getting. It enables him to become uh, introspective, to hopefully find a sense of gratitude, which leads to the next no on our list, a no complaining, right? So we have to understand in this country, you know what we love to do? We love to send a lot of people to prison for very long periods of time. I mean, it is absurd the rate at which we lock people up. Federal, state, county, a lot of people in this country have criminal records. So for that reason, even if he gets three months, six months, even if he gets two years, which is, I don't think, I think he gets like a year. Judges can make an example out of him. I read they're going to, the judge is allowing cameras in there uh, and the uh, prosecutors aren't objecting to it. So I suspect if the judge is going to allow cameras in there, I'm betting, again, if I'm wrong, leave me comments that say I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. But I suspect the judge is allowing comments. He's going to be going to prison for a while. But even if it's a year, I mean, relatively speaking, it's It's nothing. It's nothing in the totality of his life. It's a tiny little blip. It's a sliver, man, relative to how long people are serving for nonviolent drug crimes, people that are continually locked up with our country's war on our incarceration. It is utterly absurd. So he needs to say no to complaining because you know it can be off-putting to prisoners? Complaining about three months, complaining about six months, complaining about a year. No complaining. No complaining when someone says, hey, man, you got a raw deal, right? You got screwed. It was the government. The prosecutor's looking to advance his career on your back. No complaining. No, I got a raw deal. No, no, no. If he can continually say no and learn to enjoy, hopefully, his own company, finding time in the library, even if he's isolated, a reporter, apparently I'm a few minutes late for a phone call, I got to wrap this up. If a reporter, a reporter called and he's like, well, what if he's in isolation? What if he's in protective custody because of celebrity status? My, well, it doesn't mean you can't be productive. We're in COVID era. In COVID, people have been locked in little concrete bunkers for weeks, in some cases, months. That doesn't mean you can't be productive. No complaining. No getting yourself into trouble, which you can do in quarantine, commiserating and making deals with guards. Wherever he is, he's got to find a way to not let this experience define the rest of his life. And that's the direction that he's headed, right? Could have accepted responsibility, that's a no-go. Easier to blame and excuse his conduct. For him to be successful, he's got to say no to everything coming his way. No, thank you, I'm going to do my job. No, thank you, I can wait three days in the shop in the commissary and buy some granola. No, thank you to the staff member. No, I'm not gonna take the bait and complain about why I'm here. Because in reality, I know you're here for much longer than me. And in retrospect, I am so grateful that my sentence isn't longer. And I empathize with you that you're going to be here another seven years or five years. And you, Mr. Long-Term Prisoner, are unable to release to the opportunities that I know are waiting for me. And I know you don't have people like Beyonce's mom writing letters to the judge and other celebrities willing to stand by me and give a second chance. I'm grateful that I have it this good, even though I'm in even though I'm in jail or Cook County Jail. If he can begin to embrace that messaging and then share it with his network. So when I give prison advice, it's sort of like you can't do anything great, whether it's three months, six months, nine months, you can't do anything great if you're getting into trouble. And everyone always says the same thing to our team. Justin, I'm not dumb. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to use iPhones. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to commiserate with, with staff. I'm not going to go into the other dorm without permission. I'm not. They all say it. And then oftentimes they get there and they get comfortable and they begin to make really bad decisions that leads to new charges. I mean, phones, iPhones in prison or jails now, it's, it's not just a disciplinary infraction. It's a new charge. There are people who are getting a year or two in jail who are then adding years onto their prison sentence with bad decision making and they're going to higher security prison. So I would encourage him to learn to say no, to avoid the sycophants and then 
as I wrap up this video, because I am a few minutes late for a phone call, but I really want to help him and all of you learn more about what it would take to traverse the system correctly. If he can say no, he can then prioritize and recognize this is a little sabbatical in his life. It's a little respite. It's a little break. Whether he's in a prison or that Cook County jail, it is an opportunity to find perspective, to focus on what remains because too many people in prison obsess over what they've lost. My dumb ass was one of them. It took months for me to recognize that I, uh, what I had left rather than everything that I had lost. If he could focus on what he can control versus what he can't control. May not be able to control his bunk, the type of job he has, unless he says yes to somebody and pays them to do the job. Maybe can't control when he visits, his bunk, his job, his ultimate sentence. May not be able to control that because I assure you he's not mitigating. I don't suspect he's going to make a statement on Thursday that's going to help him get a shorter prison sentence. May not be able to control that. He can control his attitude, how he responds. And I will close with the best piece of prison advice, which is ironic because Friday at USC, I can't even find the book. I was I gave an ethics lecture. I was paid. I traveled to the business school to talk about ethics and white collar crime. And generally, when you give ethics lectures, you don't want to encourage people to, to lie. Not a great message. So I'm going to embrace the mantra of fake it till you make it. The last piece of prison advice I will give Mr. Smulek follows. When you call home that first time, your family is going to be wondering. They're going to be nervous. They're going to be scared. How is he? Is he okay? Is this breaking him? Is, is he okay? He's been through so much already. This is so hard. The media, the attention, talking heads like me make it harder on him. They're going to be wondering. I beg him. I beg anyone going to prison. When you call home, even if you're angry, you're upset, you want to cry, it is harder on those that love and support you. When the phone rings, they're going to be shaking. The first call as they push the button, five, except they're, they're like this. I know. Clients, what is he going to say? This is the first call from prison. Be upbeat, even if you're sad. I'm great. I'm strong. I'm handling this with dignity. I'm reading. I'm writing letters. I'm growing my network. I'm going to prove worthy of a second chance. This is a little blip in my life. I'm going to emerge stronger and better. People throughout history have endured great struggle relative to what other people have gone through. Mine is nothing. I'm strong. I miss you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Now, if you want to hang up the phone and go to your bunk or cubicle or cell and cry, fine. Make it easier on those that love and support you. Make it easier on them because they're scared. And then if you say that, fake it till you make it, they can exhale. Whew, he's okay. We can live our life. Those are some of the thoughts that come to me Tuesday, March 8th, in advance of his sentencing in two days. I conveyed a lot of these same thoughts from USC last Friday, but I've elected to refilm it. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you find value in this video. And I'm very grateful for your attention and time. Be safe, be well. Back soon. Goodbye.